months. Um, we've been waiting for it for a long time. Um, we were due to roll, every, roll it out to everybody in the at Christmas period. Um, that was before we found s several issues. Uh, more about that later. Than, later. But uh, at the moment, we've now been pushed back and we're actually rolling out a pilot to three of the curriculum teams. Um, it'll be hair and beauty, caring services and accounting and bookkeeping. Mainly due to the they've not been actively involved in the, the Moodle process so far, they've got stuff on there, but I think there are certain areas that we want to sort of push forward and get them using technology a bit more interactive along the, in what we call learn zone, but Moodle. Um, and then the idea is that in the summer we roll everyone out up to Moodle 2 and upgrade. Um, the issues I talked about were mainly the Turnitin plugin was a big issue for us. Um, there were some issues there where we, a lot of the teams used the basic tenant in plugin for the plagiarism detection um, and that didn't work in Moodle 2. So if we upgrade, uh, I think in the January period there's a lot of, sort of assignment marking so we couldn't have done that um, and that was the other reason why we chose those three teams because none of them are using tenant in so that sort of helped out. <coughs> um, other issues where we had a large amount of data um, when instead of starting from a fresh install move to we want, needed to upgrade our 1.9.8 I think we were on um, but there's about 90 to 100 gigabytes of data in the Moodle data folder so it took a long time to get for it to churn through all the files and convert them because it does actually change the way it stores the files um, before we we had several shares set up on the server you can access the fol folders directly but for security reasons in version of Moodle 2, they've swapped that around to actually all the file information is stored in the database and they've got encrypted files stored on the server instead. So that's going to change a lot of the processes we do and how we share files. Um, it may not be an issue because Moodle 2 has um, a nicer way of integrating with outside sources such as Google Docs and... Um, Flickr and Picasso, all those sort of things. So you can actually embed stuff a lot easier. Um, our plans with the three teams are, we've just started the pilot now. Um, they'll be looking at it over the next few months until summer. Um, we actually have a, an e-learning coordinator will be working with them, doing training, looking at the diff new plugins, that sort of thing. Um, but we're lo running on a side-by-side -side basis. So they'll be actually using Moodle networking, logging into our original Moodle, and then it'll redirect them through to their to the Moodle 2 instance. So the students shouldn't notice too much of a difference, but we are working on the theming of Moodle 2 as well. Um, in terms of theming, uh, we haven't got too far on that. We're just setting up a basic theme for the pilot. Then we'll get feedback from that for the summer upgrade. But it does give you a lot more opportunities, a lot more power to change the way blocks are shown. You can move things around. With Moodle 1.x, 1, 1 um, there was certain restrictions. You had certain columns you had to keep to head or footer. But with Moodle 2, you can dock things on the side of the browser. You can move things around. And I think a lot of the embedded the Ajax calls and stuff for sort of on-page updates and that sort of thing is a lot better. If we were starting from scratch, or I think it, it would be, it would have been nice being able to start from scratch from the fresh Moodle to install and get everyone to install it because because a lot of the blocks in 1.9 don't work in Moodle 2. So there's, there's been a lot of work going through m checking off which blocks work, which which blocks have available upgrades, that sort of thing. Um, so there is still going to be a, a lot of work in the summer going through everyone, everyone's course areas, working with each team individually and working out what needs to be upgraded, what needs to be ported across and what can't be and how we're going to change the, their practices really and how that's going to work. Um, in terms of server setup, um, I think we underestimated how much stuff people were going to put on Moodle in terms of files. Um, I think one of our courses, this guy has He's got the copyright permissions to do it, but he, he's got loads of language CDs for his um, 
teaching English to as a foreign language, and he's updated, uploaded loads and loads and loads of MP3s. I think his course size up to about six gigabytes now. And I wasn't expecting anyone to dab that much. His is the exception, but a lot of people are uploading stuff now and becoming more aware of adding media and that sort of thing. We, we do have facilities to allow embedding on YouTube and their own media bank, which is allows you to embed video on an external re resource. But a lot of people are uploading stuff and embedding images, which we weren't aware of before. Um, this is also going to affect how we do the, the new theme. Some people are <coughs> uploading large photos directly on the Moodle course page, which certainly pushes all the, the theme out and makes it sometimes a bit difficult to see the blocks, that sort of thing. Um, so we may a be a little more restricted on sizes of images, but I think this is going to be more of a training issue rather than being draconian and forcing people because we don't want to restrict anything. Um, but overall, I think, obviously, if you're starting from scratch now, go for the Moodle 2 install, because any subsequent upgrades from now are going to be a lot easier. Um, the difference between 1.9, whatever, and 2 is quite a lot. Um, this is definitely applicable for plugin development as well. One of my colleagues has developed, or started developing a lesson planning plugin, which allows curriculum teams to develop lesson plans and schemes of work within the Moodle interface, which they can link to courses. However, he started this when we were in 1.9, we then we thought, we'll wait till Noodle 2 came out, we waited and waited and waited. And then when it did come out, um, they changed a lot of the function calls, so a lot of the development work we'd done had to be redone so it would work in Moodle 2. Um, and that changed between the Moodle 2 beta release and the final release as well. So always go for the latest um, Moodle install that's on there. Not it does it keeps it at the top there. Um, but there, there are updates all the time. But generally, from now on, this shouldn't be too massive a, a difference. So any development plugin should be fine.